For almost half a century, Chinese officials have overseen one of the greatest economic transformations in human history. The country has gone from collectivized farms and famine to world-leading tech companies and gleaming megacities connected by super-fast trains. More than 800 million Chinese have been pulled out of poverty as the Communist Party and its leader, Xi Jinping, string together, according to the party's numbers, decades of uninterrupted growth. But the economy is now at another turning point. According to star stock picker Kathy Wood of ARK Invest, an economic slowdown in China could ripple through the global economy and weigh on commodity prices and growth. Kathy Wood has warned that China's asset bubble may burst the way Japan's did in the 1990s as China's reserves rose year on year in October after falling the previous two months. The ARK Invest founder pointed out that Japan's real estate and stock markets had overheated in 1989. And though many people predicted that Japan would overtake the United States as the world's largest economy, the bubble burst and the Japanese economy became stagnant. To better understand the deadly path China has been trending for some decades, let's go back in time. Because as Winston Churchill once said, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now, there are few things studied as closely by the Chinese Communist Party as to how to avoid the fate of its Soviet counterpart. In an internal meeting after he assumed power in 2012, President Xi Jinping said no one in the Soviet Union had been man enough to stand up to Mikhail Gorbachev and Glasnost. But for Mr. Xi, another historical event from the same era may warrant more immediate attention. It is just over 30 years since Japan began inflating a property and stock market bubble whose implosion ravaged public confidence, cowed corporations, and scarred an economy for decades. China's priority today is to avoid that fate. It is not a new concern for Beijing. In 2010, as China's overall indebtedness was approaching 200% of gross domestic product, Mr. Xi, then the country's vice president, asked scholars at the Central Party School to research the subject, according to two Chinese academics familiar with his request. A subsequent paper outlined some of the lessons of the Japanese bubble, including the need for Beijing to raise awareness of financial risks, safeguard economic sovereignty, and not give in to pressure to change its currency policy. Eleven years on, China's total debt is 274.1% of GDP and climbing. Officials are trying to rein in the tumbling sky-high real estate prices, and the government is still grappling with the aftermath of a real estate market bubble that burst in 2020 after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, Mr. Xi warned the country's leaders of the need to safeguard financial security. But how great is the risk of China turning Japanese? Does China, the world's second biggest economy in 2021, run the risk of repeating the fate of what was the world's second biggest economy in 1989, Japanese-style lost decades? If Japan's fates were to befall its giant neighbor, the consequences would be devastating for the global economy. China provides 40% of its annual growth. China also supplies just over 20% of U.S. imports, the same percentage as Japan in the mid-1980s. Goldman Sachs and other analysts suggest that there are lessons for Beijing to learn from Japan's bubble experience when laid out against spookily similar reference points, ranging from corporate debt levels to average white-collar commuting times in China. In fact, in September, Goldman Sachs economists cut their forecasts for China's economic growth in 2021 as the world's second-largest economy faces yet another growth shock in the form of constraints on energy consumption. The Wall Street banking giant now expects China's GDP to grow 7.8% in 2021, compared with a year ago. That's lower than its previous forecast for an 8.2% year-on-year expansion. Goldman's downgrade followed similar moves by Nomura and Fitch. A constraint in energy consumption isn't the only problem facing China. In an effort to control what it sees as the excesses of the market and to limit companies' power and influence, the Communist Party has deliberately swept the legs out from under giants like e-commerce titan Alibaba and ride-hailing upstart Didi, wiping out billions of dollars of market value from China's most dynamic enterprises. In addition to this, we all know that Evergrande, the massive property developer, is on the brink of collapse. This shows that China's real estate boom could be unraveling, with the possibility of sickening the entire economy. 
On October 13th, after Evergrande missed yet another scheduled coupon payment, borrowing costs for China's riskier firms soared to record highs. If that wasn't enough, President Xi Jinping also has to manage an electricity crunch, triggered partly by his aims to cut carbon emissions that could wear down manufacturing and industry. These problems come at a sensitive time for both China and the world. At the party congress next year, Xi may look to secure an unprecedented third term in office after he abolished the term limits on the presidency in 2018. The party depends on muscular economic growth to retain its perennial grip on power. This was the Faustian bargain, never really explicitly stated, but understood that you get zero political representation, but we keep the economy ticking along, said Fraser Howie, co-author of Red Capitalism, the fragile financial foundation of China. China's extraordinary rise, and a former equity derivatives trader at Morgan Stanley. But Howie said clearly that bargain is starting to fray around the edges. Symptoms of an imbalance in the economy include widening inequality, a dangerous dependence on real estate, climate change risks, and high corporate and consumer debt levels. The government's reforms aim to make life better for rank-and-file workers and their families and maintain power, but they could derail the economy as market forces are replaced with even more party control. Despite the government doing everything to keep the economy afloat, Wood is worried that China's recent crackdown on the property sector would cause an economic slowdown, if not a recession similar to Japan's. She called Beijing's effort to reduce excessive borrowing in the real estate sector and cool housing prices playing with fire. Wood emphasized the sector's importance, estimating that 75% of consumer savings in China are spent on housing. The truth is that similarities between China today and Japan in the 1980s look ominous. And this is why a lot of people, including ARK Invest CEO, think China's economy, like Japan's in the 1980s, is heading toward disaster. For a better perspective, just like China today, by the end of the 1980s, Japan had the world's second biggest economy, and it seemed inevitable that it would soon replace the U.S. as number one. But 1990 was the high watermark for Japan. A lost decade began in the early 1990s that has now lasted much longer than just one decade. From the mid-1950s to the mid-1970s, Japan's economy grew at about 10% a year. From 1973 through 1990, it averaged about 4% growth. Thanks to its stellar post-World War II economic growth, Japan was dubbed the Asian Miracle. But then, from 1990 to 2011, Japan's economic growth stagnated at less than 1% per year. It's easy to assume, thanks to status quo bias, that China's economy will continue growing steadily because that's what it's been doing for the last two decades. But many economists and analysts see disturbing similarities between Japan just before its lost decade and China today. Let's finalize by looking at the similarities between the two countries according to Kathy Wood. According to Bloomberg, from 1980 through 1990, Japan's debt rose from 105% to 176% of GDP. Today in China, debt is about 280% of GDP, up from about 160% in 2008. More debt means more resources are used to service the debt. Lots of debt also leaves an economy vulnerable to an economic shock. We saw this happen in 1990 in Japan. The country's debt levels were too high, and its economy couldn't recover after the economic bubble burst. In China, the most hit industry by this huge debt is real estate, with more and more real estate companies expected to default in the coming months. The other similarity is that Japan's Nikkei stock index rose more than 500% in the 1980s. Then it crashed in 1990, and today it's still 52% below its December 1989 all-time high. Japan's property market peaked in 1991, and then it nosedived like the rest of the economy. Just before Japan's real estate collapse, land prices were estimated to be worth $18 trillion. This was quadruple the value of all U.S. land in 1991. Although house prices rose 191% between 1973 and the beginning of 1991, they are still more than 40% lower than they were at their peak in 1991. The beginning of the stock market collapse in 1990 and the real estate market in 1991 coincided with the beginning of Japan's lost decade. 
There are serious concerns that China's stock and real estate markets are poised to mirror Japan's market collapse, and the pandemic has only made it worse than it was. In conclusion, what happens if China can't make the math work? If the country can't crank out world-leading growth while handicapping its innovative tech business, coping with electricity deficits, and powering down debt and real estate as the engines of growth, at what point does discontent turn into social unrest? Much will depend on just how much the economy slows. But the truth is, should growth slow to worrying levels, to the point that citizens are hit with steep losses on generational wealth tied up in the real estate market, China may well witness civil unrest.